Hey Eagle Run 2-3 here. We are going to fix some of our problems with the 8.6 Blackout build. Uh, best I can tell, this was the first home built 8.6 Blackout on YouTube. Uh, we've shot rounds through it, but we have not shot very many and we need to shoot more, but we've got to fix our problems. Number one problem with the gun the way it sets right now, there's two major problems. Well, there's three problems we're going to address today and then a fourth one that's not a problem, but we're going to address it. Let's go through it gas block we think our gas block is too closed off and the wrench won't fit with the handguard on that's no big deal because we got to take the handguard off anyway because we're replacing this beautiful lightweight incredibly lightweight uh gun tech handguard with a faxon handguard that's also pretty lightweight but i doubt it's as light as this one is uh, we might get some weights on that um Next, we're going to replace the trigger. We've got a Rock River Arms two-stage that we're going to throw in here. This is a mil spec with a spring and a polish job. Very nice trigger, but uh, we're looking to upgrade. So one thing that I've never liked about this gun since it was Creedmoor, and since it is Creedmoor and since I've, I've used it quite a bit, is this is so hard to pull back. And I don't know where that's coming from other than the spring. So we're also going to throw a flat wire spring in there and see if that fixes anything because this is just really difficult to pull back. And I don't know where that tension is coming from. I'm assuming it's the spring. Maybe we've got a rifle length spring in there, um, which if we do, that could honestly tell us why we've had some feeding problems initially with our Creedmoor. But anyway, we'll, we'll, we'll see what's up with that. Um, but yeah, let's get started. I can't show you how to do any of this. Um, so I'm going to do it real quick and then we'll talk about it. Okay. So this AR-10 Strike Industries flat wire, it says it's compatible with all standard AR-10 SR-25 receiver extension links. But this thing is way bigger, way bigger than what we've got. Holy cow. How is that correct? I don't, I mean, it's a lot, this is a lot stiffer, but this was an upgraded like chrome spring. I don't know guys, is this a mistake? Holy cow. It is, it's a lot softer of a spring in general. It's a lot softer. This thing is pretty firm. Well, I don't even know. We'll have to just get her in there and see what happens. All right, well, it's in there. I don't know how that fit. It went in with a fight, um, but it's in there. I am seriously concerned if there is even room for a BCG to compress. I don't even know if there's room for it to go back. I, this, this might not be the right setup here. We're going to have to uh, test it. Okay, so we've got this off. They are both 15 inchers, and this is the Faxon. And you can tell that you know the weight on this one here in the Picatinny has been removed, whereas on the Faxon, it's not. And it's definitely heavier, but heavy, but it's way lighter than I thought it was gonna be. So I guess that's good. Um, I still like this one. We're gonna use it for something, I promise. Uh, big fan of that, it's so lightweight. But this one's pretty nice too, but you can just tell there's just a bunch more rigidity and weight up here in this top rail because the other one is, is pretty heavily vented machined away. All right, let's get this thing on. All right, I'm going to move you over here a little bit to where you can see um, this guy's mounted up on my vise. So we, uh, we've got all of our changes made. So far, so good. Um, on the upper here, I'm going to show you with the fit and finish of the way that the Faxon mounts to the Aero Precision upper is primo. Um, again, I love this guy. I think it'll look great if we get a DPMS low, but this is, this is how it should have been. This looks really good. I'm very happy with this. Um, so we got everything reinstalled now on the superlative arms gas 
block, adjustable gas block. It comes with this super long adjuster, but it is not long enough for the way that we're set up. And the problem with this is that the gas system is just shorter than what a 15 inch handguard would normally have. So the way that the way that Faxon made uh, this to run is off of this length of gas tube. So it's pretty short. Um, it's a it's a shorter gas tube than you would normally run with a 15 inch handguard. That's really the point. So I guess I need to see if they have a longer one of these, but let me tell you what we did for adjustment. I clicked all the way in and all the way out and I counted 46 clicks. I haven't confirmed that on the internet. I don't know if anyone else came up with that number, but we got, we got to the number of 46. So I have done some research on how far out it should be and it looks like it should be more than three quarters of the way out. So I counted 35 clicks. It was either 34 or 35. It's a little, a little hard to tell exactly, but we got uh, 35 or so clicks and we're looking at being, you know, maybe nearly 80% open. If someone wants to do the math on that. That's my estimate. But I think that that might be better for us. Um, we still have a lot of variables here on this guy cycling. Um, one, uh, I've only got subsonic rounds for it. Um, I'm currently not shooting it suppressed, but I should have a suppressor the next time I shoot it. Um, we have this, um, we have this lower from a 6.5 Creedmoor that also had trouble cycling. Um, let's see, where did it go? We have this giant spring in here. I don't even know how it fit. Um, I don't know if that's gonna work. We may have to go back to this guy. I'm unsure about that, but one of the high notes here is this two-stage trigger is awesome. There's that little set right there where it hangs out, and then the brake is so fine. Um, you hold it down, it's gonna reset to there, and then the brake right there against that wall, it's nothing. Uh, I don't have a weight to test it. Um, I don't know what it advertises it to be, but it does pass uh, the safety check, no fire on safe, and then fire on fire. So all of that is good. Um, I don't know. This is, um, we still have a lot of variables. I'm trying to eliminate variables to get, you know, better results here, but we still have a lot of variables. All right, let's get this put back together. Okay, now for the test. Oh, it's still very tight. It just sounds like there's so much friction in there. That does not sound right. I'll tell you, it is maybe easier than it was. I just, I wonder where that noise is coming from. It really sounds like the noise is coming from the bolt carrier. But there's no mars, there's no wear marks or, or scratches on the bolt. So, boy, that's, that's real heavy. Man. Okay, well, there's nothing else to do but to shoot it. Let me get this guy propped up here and I'll show you close up. Okay, so that is what a quality matchup looks like. There's no seam, it's level top and bottom, side to side. There is a little gap there, but I, I tapped it down to where it should be good. And it also indexed properly with the with the barrel nuts, so um, that's good. But this is still a good looking package and I don't I don't dislike this handguard at all. I really just didn't wanna spend 200 bucks on a handguard when I had one. Um, still sitting here with unprotected threads. I don't know how you feel about that. But suppressor coming soon and we'll get a proper setup on the end of this thing. I don't know guys. I guess we'll just have to shoot it. 
Okay, 8.6 blackout coming at you. Thanks for watching.